This is CVE Deep Dive, the show where we take a closer look at a vulnerability submitted to SSD Secure Disclosure. And today we have a really cool one for you. Let's jump into an unauthenticated remote code execution in GetSimple CMS. GetSimple is a content management system claiming to be the simplest content management system out there. You might expect a really simple content management system to also be really secure, but the independent security researcher True Random has proven that to be false. He has submitted this vulnerability to SSD Secure Disclosure, and today we are going to check it out. The entire story starts in the admin slash theme edit.php file. This file is only accessible to administrators of the website, but that's fine for now. If you look for potentially vulnerable PHP functions in this file, you will find fopen, fwrite, and fclose here. This opens a file, writes to it, and then closes it. But the file name and file contents seem to be user input, coming from a post argument, edited file, and content respectively. Does the security researcher inside of you already get that tingly feeling? What if we create a PHP file, for example named hacked.php, and we put a PHP payload in there? Can we then access it and get an RCE? Well, the only way to find out is to try, and the following request here will use this payload. Now try to go to the teams directory and run the file hack.php. If we add the cmd get parameter with, for example, a who am I, then we see that we get the output onto the screen. We have succeeded in getting an RCE. We now have a remote code execution, but we can currently only execute it as an admin. Thus, it's an authenticated remote code execution. But we won't let that stop us. We're going to find a way to turn this into an unauthenticated RCE. First of all, there's an issue with the .hdaccess file and Apache 2 not enabling the allow override directive by default, so we can disclose directory listings of, for example, the data directory. Hmm, I see a users directory. That's interesting, and looking into it, we find pink.xml, which discloses that pink is a username, but also pink's password. That's great, we can now just log in as pink, right? Well, not yet, because this password is hashed. Thus, we have to take a step back. Luckily, we can also explore the other directory, which contains an authorization.xml file. That must be interesting, and looking at it, we see that it is indeed interesting, since there is an API key being disclosed here. Very peculiar. That seems to point us towards the authorization system, um, and it's using cookies, session cookies. From our earlier requests uh, as the admin, we can see that two cookies are being used. The gs underscore admin underscore username cookie uh, is set to, well, the username of the admin. And that's really easy to mimic because we just found a way that you could enumerate all the administrators. But there is another cookie. And this other cookie has a hash as the name and another hash as the value. That's kind of strange. So let's take a look at the code to see where and how they are created. The create cookie function is the one we need for that. Here we can spot that the cookie name is the salt cookie variable, which is created by calculating the SHA-1 hash of a cookie name variable appended by some salt. But these variables are globals, so let's track them down in the project and here in the configuration.php file, we find that it's created by taking a lowercase of the site name, which is get simple, appending underscore cookie underscore to it, and then the version. And the version can really easily be enumerated by looking at the JavaScript files in the front end shown here. So we have all that information. Thus, that's done. We now just need uh, the salt value. We find that in the common.php file, where we can see that it's pretty much just the API key that we saw earlier. So now let's create this hashed cookie name. We SHA-1 hash get simple underscore cookie underscore 3315 followed by the API key and get the correct cookie name. All with information that we could get publicly. Lastly, we also need to craft the value of this cookie name, which is just the username and the salt. Easy enough. So if we SHA-1 hash that, we get the correct value once again. So we were able to craft the session token of the admin. And that's all we need. So let's quickly recap here on the entire chain. 
we found that an unauthenticated user can enumerate a number of values from the server, namely the API key, the admin username, and the version. From that, this user can craft a valid session token that logs him in as the administrator. As the admin of the CMS, he can now exploit a remote code execution in themeedit.php to gain access over the server. And that is how the independent security researcher True Random found an unauthenticated remote code execution vulnerability on Get Simple CMS. And that's it for today. Thank you all for watching. Links to the advisory we discussed today can be found in the description down below. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope to see you back for the next one. Take care, everybody.